The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer to peer. Sorry, I think I cut you off, right? Yeah, no did, worries. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> uh, one thing I did want to bring up uh, in terms of housekeeping, we have a ton of content we've been putting out. So anybody that's listening, recommend you go check it out. We've been putting up like over two videos a week. Um, all the stuff from the Monero Topia conference. We keep releasing those videos about two a week. And then we had Monero Con videos. I think we had like six of those in total. Um, so we've been releasing like two to four videos a week. So check it out. There's a ton of content up on the Monero Talk YouTube channel. It's like all really good, really good stuff. It's kind of a shame that's all coming out at, at once, but uh, we, we want to get it out there. So just putting the word out. Check it out. Fire hose, man. Fire hose. What's that? A fire hose. <laughs> fire hose. Fire hose. Yeah. Yeah. When it rains, it pours. What's going on, buddy? Oh, not much. We had uh, we had some nice, fantastic storms last night. Lightning and everything it was great. Oh, sweet. Good, good for sleeping. Cool thing. Um, good for staying up and watching the storm, I guess. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice. How's uh, yeah, price? I have I haven't really paid attention at all this week. Was this like another crazy week or was nah. it like doldrums? There was like nothing to pay attention to. Okay. I guess we kind of took a little dip here in the past few days, but I mean, basically, Monero has been flat, and most of the crypto market looks like that. Uh, we've seen shit coins pop off a few at a time, kind of like we talked about, but um, yeah, there's just nothing really exciting going on with the price. I mean, it's a we're... stable coin, right? <laughs> exactly. That's what I thought. I mean, that's what we need for adoption, okay. right? Flat, stable, merchant adoption. Can't be worried about crashes. Yeah, it's, actually, it's... good. It was, um, man, it, it's got to be two or three years ago almost. Someone posted an article in Reddit that was talking about, um, I think they said rehypothecation or they used some fancy term um, for like basically doing fractional reserve. And like, well, fractional reserve is good because it stabilizes the price and that's what you need for a currency. And, you know, we're, I'm helping. Uh, well, he didn't say I, but, you know, I just assume he was part of the cabal. Assumed it was a, a bot account from, from CZ or something. Hmm. But um, yeah, I mean everything's just kind of flat. Uh, the dollar, the dollar did pick it up a little bit. So um, uh, if y'all remember, we kind of broke down this line, and I was like, "Wow, the violence of this move kind of has me concerned that there's probably more gains on the way." Um, somewhere mid move, you know, I called up my dad. I was like, "Hey, uh, stock market's probably still going to keep going up." So because you know, for a little bit, I was like, I was saying, "I'm not exactly top calling, but I'm concerned at this moment." Um, but when this move just started violently crashing, I was like, nah, we, we got some more gains, at least for now. Um, you know, there was something I, I did want to talk about. <clears throat> something I've, I've forgotten about, actually, for a little bit is the Gox coins. Um, one thing I'd said last year was like the <laughs> new lows will still be on the table until the Gox coins have been released. Um, so maybe new lows aren't necessarily on the table. I mean, they, they kind of are. But, um, you know, there's, there's still like this opportunity to revisit down near the 20K area. And I think the Gox coins could be a big factor in that. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a B casher out there, you know, just just be a little bit careful here because, um, you know, CZ was like they released some some press thing. They were like, oh, we we we, we we're having trouble keeping up with the demand. We don't have enough B cash in our coffers. Uh, my God, you better buy now, right? It, that's kind of what it felt like. It felt like marketing. Um, and they've never really said that with Monero. The closest they came was like, oh, our hot wallet is empty. Give us. <clears throat> one month to one year to <laughs> replenish our hot wallet. Um, Is that what they anyways, say? One month to one year? <laughs> no, no, I, I <laughs> added that. I, I embellished oh a little bit. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, you know, they were like, give us some time to replenish our hot wallet. I'm like, mm, okay, guys. Let's see. So we've got Bcash here. So Bcash is relevant because the Gox coin um, happened before the fork, and then the Gox trustee, the, the coin that they found, um, that ended up being Bitcoin and Bcash, right? Or sorry, right. Bitcoin Cash. And so uh, the only thing I would say is like, you know, if you're if you're holding Bcash here, like I'm not saying it can't pump more. Like we could definitely make it up to this sort of cluster of um, of standard deviations, that colorful blue area. Um, but uh, with the Gox coins being released and supposedly actually this time for real, for real, no take backsies um, should be like September 31st. I mean, I guess they, they could probably still take backseats if they want, but it's really looking close, close, close. It's imminent, finally. 
Um, and I know we've kind of said this for like a year or more, but it, it really is like getting close. So what um, is the amount of coins that's getting released? Uh, we I don't know the number that's getting released at this moment. So there's two there's two payments. There's the early lump sum, and then um, there's still like other lawsuits with other people that have to get resolved. And um, so like the early lump sum payment is it it actually could end up being more. It's kind of weird the way the numbers could work out, but depending on the result of the future lawsuits. Um, you could have more or less coin. Uh, anyways, but there's 141,000 Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, and I guess BSV, but nobody cares about BSV. <laughs> so, but there's like, that's a, a large amount of coin that's about to be released onto the market. Um, and one thing that a friend told me is that not everybody has to buy, but everybody eventually is going to have to sell, right? You're going to, you're going to want to sell your investment to pay for rent or, or whatever, like, Eventually, you have to sell. Life gets in the way. And we're talking about people that have that have been living their lives for the past eight years. So, it, I mean, a lot of coins could potentially get sold. And which coins, like, which coins are going to get sold first? But, like, let's let's be real. The Bcash coins, when you get your, your distribution, whatever, the Bcash coins could potentially be sold first. I would just be worried. I, I wouldn't be, like, a huge mega bull on Bcash right here. Just, um, you know, use some caution. Um, and that's also kind of another reason to expect that a top is... Uh, could be coming uh, for Bitcoin and so, you know, somewhere in the next month or two. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just, Oh, but you know, the other, the other cool thing about that to me is that um, I do think some of that could drive some market cap into Monero. Um, and as we talked about before, there's kind of this head and shoulders pattern happening on the Monero dominance right here. Uh, and the target from that, right. So basically you draw a line and, um, Actually, I guess I already have a line drawn, but we just delete that. So you draw a line at the shoulders, and then you draw another line from where the peak happened to that line. And then you copy that, and that's basically your target. So the target of this head and shoulders is um, somewhere about 1% of the total market cap, which would be uh, something like a 3x, or sorry, a 4x from here, uh, mm -hmm. like every all, assuming everything else being equal, right? Um, so... And like then there's timing this... timing with that would be around when? Like, does that like September 31st supposedly is going to oh, be the release date? Start to see the, the head yeah. And... Okay. Oh, the timing on when the head and shoulders resolves. Yeah. Um, I guess like hypothetically, you know, if it was like a perfect pattern, you would kind of see that and maybe that mm. and then that. So somewhere Q3 probably. Um, I mean, we well hypothetically Monero would start going up now, like imminently. Um, could be, you know, it still could be another month or so, but yeah, I mean, we, we should see this thing really, uh, move to the upside beginning Q3, maybe take some time to, to pause and then, and then by early 2024 next year, uh, to really pop off. So that's, that's kind of what you would hope to see. Um, and I do think fundamentally the Gox coins could drive this and I, we've kind of talked about this for a long time. It's something I've talked about for a long time. I haven't mentioned it recently. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've thought for a long, oh, when we talked about the fractal, right? We always like, hey, the fractal is about to happen. And then it, it kind of didn't happen. And we all were disappointed. Um, but I did think that the Gox coin could be something that drives some kind of chart pattern, whether that's a fractal or apparently right here, this big head and shoulders. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's that's a fundamentally large event. Um, you, you would say, oh, well, you know, how much are really going to convert to Monero, I say, well, I don't know. Let's look at, let's look at the Bitcoin to Monero market cap ratio. You know, we're looking at about 0.5%. Um, so maybe half a percent of that coin moves from Bitcoin into Monero. Probably it'll be a bit more. Hmm. Um, but I mean, you know, that doesn't sound like much, but when you're talking about 140,000 Bitcoin, maybe, maybe it's 70,000 that actually gets released right here. Cause you know, they still got to keep some in the tank. Um, I don't think we, I haven't been able to find those numbers. Maybe someone else has seen them. They can send them my way, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be at least a few tens of thousands of Bitcoin and, um, even half a percent of that moving into Monero is a somewhat significant amount. So, um, mm. I, I even do wonder, is it possible that some of the, the solid price action that we've seen with Monero, uh, could be related to that? Um, uh, not necessarily the case, right. But it, it's possible that we could, that some of this is, is happening, um, with people sort of anticipating this move in advance, you know, whales or something like that. Mm. Um, this kind of looks like a bottoming pattern to me. So this is Monero versus Bitcoin. Uh, this kind of looks like, you know, uh, there, there's some sort of bottoming range being established. You know, there's this wick here, uh, 
it, it, it you could plausibly say this is a, a bottoming pattern. It doesn't necessarily have to be right. Um, just to be a bit schizophrenic, we can go to the dollar and we can see a lot of times where I've kind of said, well, it looks kind of like things are bottoming like right here. I was like, well, that might be bottoming. And then these two candles happened. And after the end of that candle, uh, or maybe this one, I was like, nah, uh, that bottoming pattern is now invalid. It's probably going to go down further, right? Um, right here, I, you know, I'm like kind of thinking bottoming pattern, right? Things were looking nice and then just crashed. So I kind of have to adjust my thesis in real time. Um, but it, it's it's possible that this Bitcoin Monero chart here is uh, is entering some kind of bottoming pattern. Uh, I guess we could take a look at um, at the Monero versus dollar. There's really not much to look at. Um, I'll show you guys my wave magic. Uh, at some point, I'll be doing more videos on this. It takes a moment to calculate because it's a lot of lines. But um, let me get rid of the stuff that's a little bit, you know, we don't need the extra stuff. Um, okay, so yeah, again, these are standard deviations. Uh, these are uh, moving averages. So the white lines are moving averages. Standard deviations are in blue, and then the bottom here is uh, lower standard deviation. So um, I use this to kind of just give me a statistical map of what's happening. And really, uh, it's not necessarily, like, again, statistics don't necessarily tell you fundamentals. You have to be careful about that. We talk about the um, the regression analysis of Bitcoin. You have to understand what that means. You can't just be like, oh, it's perfect, right? Um, but it does kind of help you view what I think are psychological levels. Because the human brain, and really basically all brains, um, mammals in general, work on kind of like the statistical level. And um, like, for example, if you put a little side trail here, if you put a big jar in front of a thousand people full of M&Ms and you say, guess how many M&Ms are in the jar? Any one of them is going to be pretty far off, but the aggregate of all of them, if you take the average, they're going to be like insanely close. Like you wouldn't believe how close everybody gets when you average the answer. And so when I look at these lines and I look at these like moving averages, standard deviations, I say, these are broad psychological levels. People in aggregate have a sense for when the market is trending, when it's, you know, close to its, um, you know, close to being out of trend, which would be the upper blue lines or the lower orange lines. Uh, so anyways, basically Monero pumped from the bottom of the market here last year, or sorry, not last year. Um, let's go to a longer time frame. But basically we're kind of like hanging out in some um, near term upper standard deviation levels. Um, if we're going to continue pumping, I would expect, again, that the, the 180 to maybe 190 area would be a potential topping area. The next spot would kind of be this broad cluster of bands. The Monero chart, honestly, when it comes to, to wave magic is, is a little bit messy. Um, but, you know, it's it, again, it's not perfect. It's just kind of an area to, to think about where to expect some resistance. Um, like, for example, we talked about XRP last week. Um, we said, hey, things kind of came into this, uh, this standard deviation bands here. And it's going to need some time to consolidate, right? Don't expect new mad gains immediately. And that's, you know, for the last week, that's kind of what's happened. It's just it pumped and it's consolidating inside these very large upper standard deviation bands. Um, and again, you, you, my, the reason I do this is because like people talk about Bollinger Bands, like well, look at the 100 period Bollinger Band or look at the, the, the 50 day moving average or the 21 day moving, like it's, it's arbitrary. It's totally arbitrary which one you choose. Um, you might try and find a chart and say, okay, well, which one trends, right? You could do that. Um, but I just prefer to lay over, like layer them all together and then see where the clusters of bands exist, because that's, that's the most likely place that people are going to be looking, you know, when it comes to, um, say moving averages, which is the white bands here. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot that's happened this week. Uh, the, the, the dollar index kind of made a bit of a comeback. Um, gold has been trying to do good. Um, but you know, what are you going to do with 4%? Uh, barely you're going to keep up with inflation like that. Um, next week we've got the fed meeting. So, um, honestly, this is kind of an important signal to me because we've seen a lot of positive action from the stock market. And the, the reality is that, um, things are actually very close. They're within spitting distance of the all time high 5%, right? Another 5% on the S and P will put it back at its all time high from, you know, peak inflation or whatever at the end of 2021. Uh, so to me, the Federal Reserve meeting next week is going to signal, do they want to create more inflation, right? Are they interested in keeping number go up or do they want to actually get the economy under control? If they don't raise rates here next meeting, um, to me, that's game on. Like, and I don't, you know, there was, there was a few times in the past where we talked about the Federal Reserve, um, you know, the FOMC meeting and, and look at that for, for understanding 
what the market might do here soon in the future. And we, we've kind of dropped off there. We haven't really talked about it much the last few months, uh, just a little bit, because to me, it hasn't been that significant. Um, they basically did what they said they were going to do and they sort of topped off. And But right here, to me, this is more significant than the past few months because uh, the market is really getting heated. So if the Federal Reserve doesn't raise rates at least a quarter point, to me, that signals that they want the markets to go higher. They don't care too much about the value of the dollar and, uh, you know, to, to probably probably get long the market, basically. Um, you know, there's kind of like this this little reverse action here with the dollar. Um, even though I've got this line kind of drawn, you can see it's sort of a very long term line. But, you know, this could just be kind of a revisit of this this uh, what was support. This could be a revisit and turn that into resistance and potentially go down. Right. That's kind of what happened here in 2021. Um, who knows? Like, you know, we want to talk about cycles and, you know, copy paste what happened from 2019. You had this uh, secondary blow off top right uh, in Bitcoin and then it, and it went down and you know, into 2020, sorry, 2020 crash, right? That doesn't have to happen. Like the markets don't have to copy, paste, repeat. So um, just, you know, like I said, watch the Federal Reserve meeting. Uh, if they raise rates, that's really personally what I want to see. I don't want to see these markets get out of control. I don't like inflation. Uh, I'd, I'd rather see, you know, kind of some sideways chop here, to be honest. I, I don't want things to just go crazy, crazy high, at least not yet. Um, so That'll probably be a big factor in whether or not I sell the pump because I, I don't think that this is the top yet. Like I've been saying, hey, be careful, be careful. It feels like we're getting close, but I've, you know, I've I've hesitated to to call a top, you know, th thus far. But um, if the Federal Reserve raises rates, there is a good chance I'll be inclined to sell the pump on my shit coins. You know, uh, I have a few of them that I may have been holding for a while or might have picked up. Um, but if they don't raise rates, I'm probably going to let those run just a little bit. So, um, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's about all for today, unless you guys wanted to take a look at something in particular. No, I'm good. Tuxy guy, anything you want to look at? Oh, uh, no, no. I mean, mostly Monero, you know, all yeah. about Monero and everything else isn't, nothing else matters. Only Monero matters. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, what what are the what are the top coins you're looking? At? Obviously, you, you know you keep a close eye on Monero, Bitcoin. What are some of the other top things that you you personally kind of keep a look on? If you don't mind divulging. Well, I don't want to be accused of shilling, but um, I think Link is a very interesting coin in the sense that it's kind of proven itself over the years to be fundamentally necessary for DeFi. Um, there's a lot of criticism and probably justified. Honestly, I don't I don't really know, um, but I've I've been holding Link for a while. Uh, and we actually had some pretty good pump on link recently. Let's go to the link chart. There's XRP, chain link. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's kind of used everywhere. They've got the oracles. One thing interesting that happened with link at the bottom of the bear market is that they, like they prevented uh, a liquidation of some kind by not reporting for 10 minutes. <laughs> it was something FTX related. I, I think it was link. I'm pretty sure it was link. Um, or like maybe not link, but like the oracles that they run or something like that. They didn't report for like 10 or 15 minutes when a liquidation moment should have happened for some like big player. Um, so there, there's that. I mean, it's, but you know, I, I'm not pleased to understand. I'm, I'm not commenting that, Hey, this is an amazing coin. You know, it's going to be the digital freedom money. I'm not, you know, it's just like something that I use sometimes to, and something that I'm interested in holding, right. I'm interested in holding this one for probably a long period of time because it's so used amongst DeFi. And I do think that regulatory clarity will drive the next bull market and DeFi will be a big deal. Um, so uh, right now we've seen Link has kind of made a almost 60% pump. Um, it's been, again, kind of forming this potential bottoming pattern. What's funny is that it actually set its lows, like from the top, from like the bull market top, it set its lows down here um, recently. Uh, it kind of crashed when, when the whole SEC attack uncertainty was happening. Um, but there's like there's solid potential here, right? For for Link is a long term hold. You could easily make it to these blue bands at another. I guess that'd be one one and a half x uh, that you could potentially make there. Um, and I, and I do think there's a good chance that it could go higher. I, I'm kind of holding another um, really kind of outside play, and it's you know it's not something that you would. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up here. It's it's not something that you would. Um, Ada is another one that I'm holding as well. Just. I can't, I, 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 fuck, I can't stand <laughs> the guy that, that runs this coin, but, um, you know, uh, you it you seems like there's some potential for punch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, just a little bit, just a little bit, right? <laughs> um, I have another one called uh, Tau, 
um, a bit tenser. So they're they're basically trying to solve AI training models, hmm. and yeah, like they they're so what they do is they kind of sample. They they've got um, validators and they've got calculators. They don't call them calculators, but you know my my meager brain uh, thinks of it that way. So it, it's basically like they're trying to calculate or they're offering resources to do AI training models. And then you've got people that sort of verify the miners that are like doing these calculations and they say, okay, well, who's the best miner? They give them weights or whatnot. I, I don't know. I mean, who knows if it can work or not. We we're seeing a lot of stuff that seems to be working at least for now. It's reasonable to expect that the next big bull market, if, and when it happens is going to involve AI, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be like, Oh my God, we've got the AI blockchain and we've got the AI stock and this and that. And like, you're going to hear AI, just like you heard blockchain in 2017 pumped yeah. the stock, you know, whatever stock mentioned it, like they would pump two X overnight because they mentioned blockchain, probably AI is going to be the same thing this next, this next run. So, um, mm -hmm. I kind of have this coin here. It's, it's an outside player. Um, I think I picked it up somewhere around like 40, not here. This is not the full chart. It was actually like yeah, was their, their full chart exists down here. So I picked it up somewhere down here because a friend of mine was like, yo, there's this AI thing. Do you want it? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I says, well, we're going to run a whole node and we need some uh, cash to, to make this thing, you know, to, to be in the validator list. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll participate. You know, here's some cash. Um, okay, cool. So it's one of these things I'll, I'll hold. Hey, you know, you've like been watching it closely? Like they have, they have like a decent team and stuff? Oh, no, I don't. I haven't watched it all. <laughs> 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 you guys now Is have the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> Sounds Chinese almost. Tau. Yeah, right. Tau. Bit, bit tensor. Um, I mean, I, I, again, guys, I'm not I'm not recommending. Um, yeah. This I mean, is just... Tau is like, you know, the way of the Tao, the way of the Tao, right? So oh, do the okay. sign of the cross in Buddhism or something. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm not recommending any of this, right? I'm not saying get into Ada. I'm not saying get into Link. Um, <laughs> actually, I kind of might be saying get into Link as a speculative play. Um, but even like slightly more fundamentally, I think Link, because listen, I don't, I don't understand these smart contracts. I have to sort of like... The best that I can do is to look at the smart guys, but then the smart guys are always arguing. So how, how do I know? But one thing that I that I do look at is, okay, what has existed for a while and what seems to have proven itself? Um, like when Uniswap came out, I was like, okay, we can kind of trade on ETH. I don't know, whatever. And then it existed for a few years and kept going. I was like, well, I guess I can get into stable coins. I can use this to, you know, do this and that, you know, right out the, the bear market. And it, you know, over time it kind of proves itself. And I know that there's fallacies involved. So please, you know, don't, don't uh, hang me. Don't string me up for fallacies here. But um, body certified uh, link... financial advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is like a very long way of saying, uh, you know, not not financial advice, bro. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so it's just some of the other stuff I'm I'm looking at. I'm probably not going to sell BitTensor, like unless it pumps to somewhere in the four hundred, five hundred dollar range, like you know, way up here. I'm probably not going to sell this because I really do think AI will be a big catchphrase, growth stock, buzz, whatever, um, mm -hmm. when the next bull market kicks off. So. Uh, I put a little bit in here, a very small amount, and it could, you know, it could multiply 10x, could multiply more than that. And maybe it crashes to zero and I, I wipe my tears and I move on. But, uh, so we need a Monero Chan AI to pump Monero. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That sounds good, man. Oh, something yeah. crazy that did happen last night. Um, uh, so I, I used to do like, you know, NASDAQ trading, like when I was a, an idiot. Uh, I did like <laughs> retarded contracts that, uh, made a lot of money and then I got greedy and they expired with like nothing. Uh, but I still own like some AMC back from those days. And last night it just like seven, went up 70% after hours, like out of nowhere. Nice. Uh, I, I think it's related to like uh, a couple movies that were coming out, but pump 70% AMC. Just 70. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's an AMC. You started messing stock. around with it back when it was like when it first was being used as a meme coin type of thing. Yeah, no, I was in all the GameStop stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I participated in some of that degeneracy as well. <laughs> and it, let's just say it didn't, didn't make me uh, a lot of money. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> just screw the short sellers. Oh, uh, okay. It yeah, did. we wanted the Moaz, right? That was the idea. That's right. That's right. We so on Reddit, and this was like last year or when the whole thing was happening, they'd be like, You Monero people, you just seem like the like the game stonk. And I'd be like, No, 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 no. Listen, man, like, yes, they're fractionally reserving. They're they don't have all the No, they're no reserving. At least the banks are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, really are they? I mean, I believe that. Like, but the thing is, I think they can continue that. 
Well, both on Monero and with um, with GameStonk. And for a while, I thought, okay, they can't continue that. Eventually, the shorts have to close. But apparently, they can, they can just keep rolling them. And they did that until the price came down. Um, but yeah, like we don't. I don't necessarily think that the MOAS has to happen when Binance goes bankrupt with the with the Monero fractional reserve, and we're going to arrive at the promised land, right? Like that's not. I think they can probably continue to do this. And and the only yeah, person that can really stop Binance it. is the government. Right, like the government is the only one, and I don't, I don't want, I don't really want the government to get involved. Like they just, they make things worse. Like it's bad, yes, I know it's bad, but they just make things worse. So, um, but you know what could cause the Moaz for Monero is the goxening. Could release those gox coins. Yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, buddy, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Great. Yeah, thanks, buddy.